Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. Uh, great to be back. It's fall. Uh, we're going to talk a little football. Uh, leaves are turning. It's getting cool. No, not really. It's like 100 degrees here. But before we talk about football, just want to remind you, we're working hard to put up content for you to learn some of the things that I know about sports photography, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to our channel. It really makes a difference. It makes a difference with YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything. We're not going to bombard you with emails. Give it a try. Just click that subscribe button, and we'll talk about football. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 tips for shooting football. Starting at number 10, this is before you even leave your house. You want to go over your gear. You want to have a checklist. You want to make sure that you have your batteries, that you have your memory cards. I have gotten to the airport without both at times. Fortunately, I live near the airport. You want to have the cameras and lenses that you prefer, and we're going to talk about that in, a, in another episode. Um, maybe some water energy bar, if it's a day game, maybe some sunblock and a hat, and those always helpful knee pads. That's, so gather that stuff, check it over. Check it over the night before. It's always better to check things over the night before. So that's the first tip. My next tip is know your gear, know your equipment, know your camera. Don't go out with a brand new piece of equipment. Know what it does. You're not going to figure it out on the sidelines. And in that same vein, Know the game. Know the game that you're shooting. Know the teams. Know the players. The more you know about what's going to go on in the next three hours on that football field, the better chance you have of making really great pictures. Do your research. Read the paper. Read on internet. Uh, even if it's a high school game and you get there early, and again, getting there early is another really important thing. Get there early. Talk to an assistant coach. High school, they'd love to talk to not so much in college or pros, but that's another tip for you. Tip number eight, have a plan. Have an assignment. Even if you don't have an assignment, give yourself one. Don't go out there and just wander around and shoot the game. Really try and think, think I'm going to get this running back. I'm going to do a little study on wide receivers. I'm going to shoot the coaches. I'm going to shoot the coaching staff. Having that in your mind, that discipline, can really make a difference in terms of coming back with some pictures that are meaningful, or just coming back with some pictures. Oftentimes, when I worked for Sports Illustrated, I had a specific assignment. And some of you may, even in high school. I know people who work for Max Preps, their, their job is to get a headshot of every player on each team. Uh, I work a lot for AP now, and I get lists from them, lists from Nike, lists from Fathead. And I put all those lists, I compile them all, I, I write them on a piece of tape and stick them on my lens hood so I have them during the whole game so I can, I can watch them. Some people make really elaborate charts, but that's a little too much for me. But, you know, knowing what you need, knowing that you need something and going after it is just so much more, uh, I don't know, it just, it's just much better than just sitting out there and kind of taking whatever comes your way. I think that's really important, whether someone gives you the assignment, whether it's a list, whether it's a part of your job, or whether you're just out there for fun, that you have some sort of purpose, something you're trying to achieve every game. Tip number seven. Most camera users who have autofocus cameras uh, control the autofocus with the shutter button, and that's great for them. They're taking pictures of their friends, their family, they push the button, the camera focuses, bingo. They've got a sharp picture. Shooting sports, however, requires a little bit more than that. If a camera is of a certain amount of quality, it will have a button on the back of the camera that will control the autofocus independently of taking the picture. This is important because you don't want the camera autofocusing all the time. You want to be able to say, I want it to autofocus now. Oh, someone's cutting in front of me. I want it to take my finger off the button, back on, back off. This takes some getting used to. But trust me, for sports, it is the way to go, the only way to go. 
and I think you'll find in all the major camera manufacturers, all of their what would be, we would consider sports cameras with a high shutter speed or a high rate of uh, frame rate, they will have this option. You just have to find it and figure out how to do it. Now, these cameras come with a lot of other options too. Um, a lot of different focus modes, a lot of different adjustable focus spots, and I can't tell you that there is one that works right for everybody that's the best. I'm a little, I find it a little confounding that we have so many options. Uh, I know, for example, um, with Canon, which I shoot, EOS 1DX Mark II, uh, there's a mode two. It's a mode that kind of sticks and holds on to things. So if you're shooting a quarterback rolling out, it's great. It'll follow him. It'll even follow him when someone cuts in front of him. But if you want to shoot that wide receiver, it's not going to get there. It's slow. It's, it's slow. It's also very good for swimming, which I'm going to talk about in a future episode. It's good for swimming when they're in the water because it's not um, fooled by the water that splashes up. If you get the face in focus, you're not going to, it's not going to jump to the water. But don't use it to shoot the, the swimmers coming off the block because you will never get them sharp. It will not pick them up fast enough. So everything has a little bit of a plus and a minus, every one of those cases. Um, with Canon, my personal choice for football is usually uh, case four. And I usually use um, four or nine spots in the center. But again, that's a personal thing. There's a lot of ways to do it. Your mileage may vary. Try it. Try it. Tip six, high shutter speed. The bigger the file, the bigger the sensor, the more mega megapixels a camera shoots, the higher the shutter speed needs to be to stop action. Don't ask me why. I don't know the scientific reason, but I know this for a fact. I know, look back at, at, at things I shot on film, football at night at a 500th, even a 250th of a second. Now, there was a little blur in the hands and the feet, maybe, but there was sharpness. Now, I don't like to go under 1250th at night, and I like to be above 2000th in the daytime. Now, you guys who shoot high school football in bad light, you're going to say, oh, but I have to, I have to go. Take the ISO up. You can fix noise. You can fix noise, but you cannot fix motion blur. You cannot fix motion blur. So don't be afraid to take the ISO up. Most of the modern cameras really perform very well, better all the time at higher ISOs, 4,000, 5,000, 6,400. Do that and keep your shutter speed up. Tip five, don't just look at the action on the field. Look around you. Look at the bench. Look at the crowd. I, uh, early in my career, I worked on a book for the NFL called A Game of Passion. And my entire assignment for the whole season was not to shoot any action on the field. And believe me, I was a young stud with a 600 millimeter lens back then, and I thought this was crazy, but it taught me so much about what I could look for on the bench area, in the, in the stands, around the field. There's a whole lot going on there that does, does not happen between the end zones. So keep your eyes around, look for different things, interesting things that will make your presentation from that game a lot more of a, uh, a truer picture. Look around. Tip four, backlighting, front lighting. Where is the sun? Where are the shadows? Uh, even at a night game, you'll see variations in lighting. I just shot up in uh, Oakland on Friday night, and that field, uh, there's so much difference. There's a stop and a half difference between certain areas in that field. But when you're shooting a day game, like I will be in two weeks, I'll be shooting a Rams game at one o'clock start in late August in LA. You think that's great, it's gonna be sunny, it's gonna be wonderful. No, it's not so great because all you're gonna see under those helmets is shadows, shadowed faces, if you're shooting with the sun behind you. Now, in November, October, right before daylight savings time, with the right game time, game start time, there's some beautiful light in the Coliseum, and up in Oakland, and in a lot of stadiums. Some beautiful light, but right now, you don't want that front light. You want to go to the backlight side. You want the sun behind the players. That way, and you have to open up a little bit, 
but you're not shadowed. You get the faces, you get the detail. And sometimes you get some really pretty pictures. When it gets really pretty is when the shadow starts to come across the stands. So now you have a dark background, and then you have the players who are somewhat rimmed with the light from the backlight. And you can see their faces. So be aware of that. Don't just think, oh, it's sunny, I'm going to shoot right here, because you will have a lot of big black spots under there. Um, be aware of the light and, and pay attention to it. Tip three. When you're shooting a high school game at night, you really have to be aware of the positioning of the lights, the angle of the lights. In most cases, the end zones are not well covered in high school fields. They're not well, well covered, uh, they're dark, they're darker than the midfield. You have to take that into account. Another thing is that lights in a lot of those older fields actually cycle through a color cycle because they're 60 cycle electricity. So you will see literally three frames where it's slightly orange, slightly green, slightly orange, you know, slightly pink. You'll see this color shift. Now, there are some cameras, Canon has a couple, that have a feature that does correct for this amazingly. I mean, how does it know? But that, that is available. I'm not sure about other manufacturers, but that's something to really look into because if you're shooting a game that basically you're going to post most of it up on Spugbug or something like that, you don't want to have to color correct every frame. So you really have to watch out for that. Uh, but again, the end zones can be dark. Um, even in some colleges, the end zones are dark. And maybe they've painted the end zone a dark color, dark blue, black. In, in the pros in Atlanta, one end zone is black. And the light's not great in that new building. So be aware of those things. Be aware that it's not all the same, even at night. Tip number two shooting the different offensive positions. Let's start with the quarterback. You want to watch him warm up. Obviously, the first thing is, what's his throwing hand? Is he a lefty or a righty? Then the next thing is, does he bring his hand up in front of his face? Like this, like a number of quarterbacks do. You want to see how quick his release is. You want to really just watch him the whole thing through, through practice so you get a feel. Some quarterbacks, uh, the face mask blocks their eyes if you're down low. That used to be the case with Peyton Manning, so you would stand to shoot him because when you're low, you wouldn't see any eyes. So you want to watch the quarterback. Now, where are you going to shoot him? You want to nail down something early in the game. Two yards behind the line of scrimmage, on the side of his throwing hand, and hopefully he'll just roll right out to you or drop back. Boom, it's a boring picture, but you need it. You gotta get it. Now, you wanna get a little more adventuresome, move downfield. The thing is, modern offensive linemen are huge. They're big. A lot of times, you don't see the quarterback behind there. Unless he's a guy like an Elway, or a Kaepernick, or a Michael Vick, or something who just has happy feet and can, and can move. Then you wanna be downfield, because he's gonna, he's gonna bust out for that 30, 40, 50 yard run, you want to be able to get him coming at you. But by and large, start a little bit behind the uh, line of scrimmage and that'll get you a safe quarterback picture, dropping back, rolling out. That's a good start. Now, running backs. Same thing with the running back, honestly. If they're back in a, in a I formation, um, they're going to start running before they hit the line. And there's a 50% chance they're going to run towards you. So again, you've got your safe running back shot. Then again, take yourself down the field, 20, 30 yards. Probably, if it, you will find yourself more often than not heading for the end zone, which is my favorite place to shoot. But if you've got, uh, say, a 300 millimeter lens, you've got to wait until they get pretty close. But then you want to be a little off to the side, the corner. The corner of the end zone is what I really like. It seems like a lot of players, when they score, they score right at that pylon. So that's when you ha hopefully have a back who busts one. I at the Raiders game the other night, um, first, first play of the game, Marshawn Lynch, 70 yards, boom, just like that, beast mode. So that's the kind of stuff where you just got to pick it up from the end zone. Um, offensive linemen are very tough, very tough, because their whole job is to block defensive linemen, and so they're all in a mess. I think you want to get super low, and you want to shoot the minute that ball is snapped, because that's when they come up. And maybe you get lucky and the particular line coverage has your guy not actually nose-to-nose -nose with a defensive player. So you get a shot of him. 
your wide receivers, tight ends. This is best, these are best players that are best shot from behind the line of scrimmage. Now, of course, every once in a while, somebody, some Odell Beckman goes long, long, ball drops in, you should, should have been in front of him. Most passes, the receiver or the tight end turns back to the quarterback. So you will see him, you will see his face, you will see his eyes, you will see him receiving the ball. That's where you do that. So that's behind the line of scrimmage. Shooting a wide receiver, you have to make choices. Hopefully, your choices are based on all the information you've accumulated about the team and the, and the schemes and the things they run and who they run it against. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to pick a wide receiver and hope that the ball comes to him. And sometimes he won't. So that's the offense. Defense is next. Tip number one, shooting the defense by position. The defensive line. Usually you want to be pretty far behind the, the quarterback, behind the line of scrimmage, facing the defense, more towards the center of the end zone. As I said, you go to the corners of the end zone when you're shooting offense. You want to move to the center to shoot defense. And um, you just got to, you know, pick your guys. I mean, it's, it's a great shot. I love to shoot pass rushing defensive ends. Those guys come around and they flap and they twist and they wrestle and then they bust through. That's a wonderful picture. Interior defensive line, you've got to hope that they break through too. You've got to hope that they're playing against a lesser offensive line. Uh, linebackers and uh, cornerbacks, safeties, D-backs, pretty much the same thing as the receiver. You really need to be behind or at least uh, behind line of scrimmage to the side. And you just got to pick a guy and hope that he gets involved in a play. And just track him. Inside linebacker is probably the toughest. Sometimes you can just get a little ahead of the line of scrimmage and maybe they'll come your way or maybe they won't. But that's again uh, something you have to know based on the knowledge that you've accumulated about the team, about the game, about the sport. When you're shooting close to the line of scrimmage, uh, either on the offensive side or the defensive side, I like to use a 400 millimeter. I know some people like to go a little wider, but I find if you keep your framing, you pay attention to your framing, you can get some great dynamic shots with the 400. Clean, clean backgrounds. You want that background out of focus, 400 millimeters. When I go downfield further, I would either use a 600 millimeter or I would use a 1.4 extender on my 400 millimeter. So that would be my lenses. I would then add a wide angle lens around my neck for the plays that happen right in front of me and possibly a 70 to 200 zoom for close goal line plays. When you're up close, but I mean, no, you can use a four. You can get a 400 is feet to above the head on the quarterback, midfield, and the same thing with linebacker. I think a 400 is, is fine up close. You that and here's another thought about football, something that's really important. Get low, get down, get on your knees, get as low as you possibly can. Whatever, whatever form of football, if you're shooting peewee to the NFL, everything that you shoot from low makes your players look more heroic, makes them with the, with the younger players, you can see their faces. It just makes the whole thing look better. As much as you can shoot from down on your knees, as low as you can get, it's really important. It'll really make a difference. I can look at a picture and I can see if it was taken from, from a low angle or from someone standing up. Don't be lazy. Don't stand up. Get down. And here's a few more thoughts just to wrap things up. It's a crazy scene on a football field, even on a high school field, more so on a college, nuts on a pro field. You've got to stay in yourself. You've got to stay calm. You've got to not let all that stuff affect you. And you've got to have your knowledge, have your plan, take a position, let the action come to you. If you start chasing the action, you're always going to be one step behind. Just take some time, calm. It may not come the first play, but it'll come. If you're in a good place, if you've done good research, you know what's, what should be happening in this game, it will happen for you. And most of all, have fun. It's a great thing to shoot football. It's great. It's marvelous. Have fun with it.